All right, two of the heavyweights in Division I baseball going at it today on the diamond. Wachusett and St. John's. And when you talk preseason about what teams do you think you're going to see down the stretch there at the end of the districts or maybe Super 8 teams, these are two teams that are always mentioned, always in the mix. So who's going to get that early leg up? We'll take you out to the mountaintop today. Beautiful day for baseball. High atop the mountain there is Rusty Egan, Charles Rusty Egan, our Darren Dalton leadership award winner of the day. Top of the second, one nothing Pioneers. Jake Hamill with the base hit. Jack Fields and Patrick Galvin both come in to score. And it's 3 nothing St. John's in front. Christian Jordan going opposite field. Jordan's got a single and an RBI. Bailey McCule scores. And it's 4 nothing. Ian Seymour laying down the bunt. He beats the throw to first. Wachusett first baseman Johnny Flynn. Good throw to third to nail the runner. Bottom of the second. Wachusett's Francis Ferguson. He's a great pitcher for Wachusett. Earned his first win earlier this season. Now he has a base hit. Nick Yanko scores, and it's 4-1. Cole Durkin going opposite field. Eddie Beauregard being waved home. He's booking around the bases. He scores. It is 4-2. Exciting play at the plate. St. John's is Matt Stansky dropping the off-speed stuff to get the strikeout and the inning. Top of the third. Jake Gigliotti bringing the heat for the strikeout. St. John's getting the win today. 11-3 is your final. Bromfield and West Boylston today at West Boylston High School. Bromfield was the home team, though. Finding a field to play, you know. Top of the third, scoreless game. Brandon Anderson stealing second. Getting into scoring position. Thomas Silva banging one through the left side. Anderson scores. It's 1-0 WB. And Silva's got himself an RBI. Cam Matalone getting the strikeout to end the inning for Bromfield. Bottom of the third. Alec Tata getting the strikeout for the WB. Then Ian Hansen, little Texas leaguer. Matt alone moving up to second. First and second for Bromfield. Tata with a great pickoff move. Nails the runner at first, and that ends the inning. So we move to the bottom of the top of the fourth. Shane Ladden with the single into center. Corey Shea taking second, and the WB is threatening. Sharp liner to short. Lance Giraz makes the grab for one. Steps on second for the inning ending. Double play. Wes Wilson gets the win in their opener. 9-1 to one is your final this afternoon. Burncoat and Doherty. Softball. Doherty, of course, the defending district champs. Made it all the way to the state finals. Bottom of the first. Peyton Sylvester lifts one into shallow right. It's a Texas leaguer. Natalie Barrera scores. one nothing. Doherty in front. Nicolette Jenkos. Singles to left center. The Jenko's family name, synonymous with athletic excellence at Doherty. Nikki Soretti scores 2 nothing Highlanders. Emma Brennan, that's right, Luke Brennan's younger sister. She singles through the left side. Sylvester scores 3 nothing Doherty. It is a who's who of Doherty athletic history out there on the diamond. Beautiful play by Danny Ellis Garcia at third to grab the dribbler, win the foot race to third, and get the out. May Walsh Costello with the flare. Timory Harity scores. 4-0 Highlanders. Alex Bowden. Bearing down and gets the strikeout in the circle. Barrera. With the hit to right, Samantha Baldino scores. Walsh Costello scoring as well. 6-0 Doherty. And they're not done. Soretti. Laser. Gianna Goggin scores. Barrera scores as well. And Doherty gets the win. 14 to nothing is your final. Two years ago, Auburn had a JV boys lacrosse team that was funded by the parents and the players themselves. Last year, the school funded the JV program. This year is their first year as a varsity. And they're making strides. Each game, each practice, huge one today for the record books for the Auburn boys lacrosse program. Auburn at home hosting St. Peter Marion. And there is the Auburn team. First year as a varsity program, just third year as a program. Final seconds of the third quarter, SBM shot wide, but I love the Auburn goalie, Jake Daniels, taking the fight to the attackman, breaks it up, 
Third quarter ends. Great play by JD. Auburn up 9 3 after three quarters. Fourth quarter, and definitely this is the definition of a yard sale check. Yep. Knock the stick out, scoop the stick up, fling it around. Just outstanding defense. Colson Hammond. Great move. I like this one. It's a new take on the traditional face dodge. He fires an Anthony List with the save. And the rebound shoveled wide. Hammond on the ISO. Hammond rings the crossbar. I have found Tom Brady's replacement. Brady will play for another 15 or 20 years, and then Marcus will be ready to take over for TB12. Great arm for an 18-month-old. Manny Rosario finds Caleb Mackin. Mackin's got a twine finder. It is 10-3 Auburn in front. How about them Rockets? SPM answering Chuck McDonald ripples. It's 10-4, Liam Connor getting the assist. Jake Cussey. For Auburn, the long stick on the run, fires and list with a great save. Owen Leary down the other end. This is a straight power move. Leary ripples. Auburn, though, gets the win. 10-5, first win in program history as a varsity. Congratulations to the Rockets. 10-5 winners this afternoon or early evening, I guess is what you'd say. The Assumption football team played their spring game yesterday. Now, the Hounds are coming off back-to-back -back seasons where they went to the NCAA tournament. Last year's team, they returned so many players from last year's squad. They did graduate some, so there are some positions that are still open. Of course, Coach will tell you all the positions are open. One thing that he loved, Bob Chesney, about all spring practice culminating with the spring game was how hard the players competed. Well, I think we, we have a lot of voids to fill, and, you know, the compete part was what I love about this spring. We have competed at such a different level than we have, you know, at, at any other, other any other point. You were at one of those practices and you saw the how, how that thing turned out. And and I'm just very impressed with how hard we're going to compete. But there, it's because there's positions that are open. So these guys are fighting for those positions, and that's what this this what makes you know makes any good team you know really really good. So that's what we have to just be able to continue to do is just compete. And and today I felt you know kind of was along the same lines. It, it, it lacked a little bit in my mind but at the same time I was proud of the way these guys came out here and fought. Well again just a, uh, a tribute a tip of the hat to Coach Chesney and the entire Assumption football team the great work that they have done with Jan and the team impact program and then getting Jan's family the the new car as well a phenomenal job the the game really secondary to the impact that they're having on Jan's family uh, and that team itself is going to be phenomenal. Bob Chesney and his staff, just an outstanding coaching staff. But really, they, they have it all in perspective. They care a lot more about the people than they do the X's and O's, the player. And that's, in today's day and age, that's great. It's unique in college football. And uh, there's a reason why they're winning the way they are. And, and it starts with just how much they care for their players and the community in general. I'm sure it had a huge impact on that little boy, too. Oh, it certainly story. did. And, and it has the entire time that they've been affiliated with him. You go out in the fall, Jan will be at practice. He'll be there at some of the spring practices. Uh, they just, Coach Chesney and his entire team and staff do a phenomenal job with Jan. It's a great story. For Kevin Shea, I'm Catherine Andrioli. Thanks for watching Worcester News tonight. Have a great night.